Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. I'm coming to you from Huntington Park, California, and I'm at a facility where Friedman Amplification builds their amplifiers, and a variety of other products are made here as well. We're with Dave Friedman. Great to see you on the day after NAM, man. Great to see you. A little tired. We're all a little tired, aren't we? What'd you say? It's a NAM coma day, right? Exactly. NAM coma tour. <laughs> right. So tell us about this facility. What goes on here? So this is a Boutique Amps Distribution, which uh, manufactures our amplifiers, does the distribution for our amplifiers, sales, marketing, etc., where I'm very, very involved in all the time. And they also make a variety of other, other products like Synergy, uh, uh, Morgan amplifiers, Bogner pedals, uh, Friedman pedals, Wampler pedals. Oh, I'll forget some. Oh, a Tone King. Uh, uh, a few, uh, in the future, Soldano, diesel distribution. Right. So all sorts of stuff. So there's lots going on here, and you really are taking things from the raw wood, the raw components, and at the other end of the building, we're getting a finished amp. Correct, correct, absolutely. Right here, we're sitting in the wood shop right now, which is, uh, you know, this is where all the cabinets are made on site. We don't use any outside vendors for almost anything here. I think our chassis are the, come from outside, but, but nothing else. And, uh, you know, with that, we have complete control always of what we can do. So if you want a you know, custom one-off Tolex of something, we can do a one-off. You know, it's very easy for us, and quickly we can do it, you know? Right, right, right. So take us a little bit through the process. Our sheets of lumber come in here, and, and where does it go from there? Okay, well, it starts, uh, starts in this wood shop. Sheets of lumber come in, Baltic birch, all over the place here. Uh, you know, that it's cut on a CNC machine over here that all the cabinets get raw cut on. Uh, from there, they're assembled. Uh, and uh, uh, sanded and sealed and radiused and everything else. And then from here, it goes out of the wood shop and, and goes to a waiting area to be Tolex. So then they're Tolex as they're needed. Okay. Let's step over to that area. Yeah, we can, no problem. So Dave, we were just talking, this is actually a really cool building that you guys are located in, and you were mentioning that it goes back to like World War II days. It goes back to World War II. They did some sort of production for the war here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it was, though. I can't remember what I was told. But yeah, very old, full-size lumber with these big vaulted ceilings. And, uh, you know, if you could see up top, you see what I mean. Yeah, really cool stuff. Anyway, continuing on the tour, yeah. so we're now in the area. The, the uh, cabinets have been made, but they're just raw lumber. Yeah, Tell us what happens next. So the cabinets come out, and then uh, it goes over to a paint booth over here, which where they get uh, sprayed on the inside, you know, the flat black. And then the cabinets are moved to behind me over here, where they're awaiting tolexing. So uh, as you see here, we have tons and tons and tons of cabinets going all the way back here. Right. And this is both head cabinets, combo cabinets, and speaker cabinets, everything so it's the whole range. The brands, yeah, everything for all the brands, correct. Mm -hmm. So let's step down and see what the uh, Tolexing process is like. So Dave, we have some cool machines here, but you have people back here hand covering the, the cabinets. Tell us about the process. How long does it take to do a cabinet? What's involved? Oh, that's a very good question. I don't know if I actually know how long it actually takes to Tolex the cabinet. Yeah. They're pretty quick at it now. I think they do a lot of them. You know, so like we said, all the cabinets are waiting over there where we just saw, and then they come here for the, the Tolexing, the final Tolexing, the gluing. The glue is applied with the machine over here. It's put on. They've been doing it a while. They're really good at it now. Well, there's some, yeah, there's some skill there that's required to get that to cut and to fit and not be, have any bubbles or bunches or any uh, you know, irregularities in it. Exactly, exactly. And after they're done Tolexing here, they get stacked up on the shelves over here where uh, you know, they're just sitting and waiting their assembly. So Dave, the amp, the, the combo, the cabinet, they're Tolex, they're painted. What's the next step in the process? Next step would be uh, uh, inserting the amp chassis into the combos or heads or the speakers into the combos or, or final assembly, essentially, before they go to boxing. Okay. And that's all done right here, as you can see. We have a bunch of, it uh, looks like Tone King amps uh, being, being done uh, with some speakers put in. We have a bunch of our head shells sitting over here uh, waiting for amps. And this is also where corners go on and where handles go on. And, uh, Correct. Does corners, handles, anything involved in the final, right up until the, you know, the bagging and boxing. So what stage does like the piping go on your head cabs and the, uh, you know, those decorative kind of things? That happens over in the Tolexing area. All the piping goes on there. So they, finish, they deliver finished uh, product and it goes on the shelves over here. And then it's moved to this uh, area for assembly. So Dave, we're in the kind of the last 
area, right? This is the staging area before the amps go out to Sweetwater and, well, really just to Sweetwater, right? Correct. This is where all the stuff uh, gets stacked up on pallets and stuff to get ready to go out and on, on freight. And there's all kinds of stuff here. Lots yeah. of uh, lots of things going in big stacks. So this is just the last stage before it goes out and gets on the truck. Correct, correct, correct. So we have entered the area where the amps are actually assembled here. I see lots of components and chassis and, and uh, people digging into the insides of the amps. What's happening? Uh, this is our amp assembly line, essentially. We have all the people here and on this side assembling all the hand-wired amps that are done here, mm -hmm. from raw components to the finished product. And then from here, they wind up going in, at least all of my amps, wind up going into a test room that we have over here, where, well, first they're tested here and burned in for 24 hours. Then they go into my test room, where I play test every amp that leaves the facility for Friedman. Every single one. Every single one. Every single one. Wow. There's my initials on the side and my signature on top. Every amp. So how much time do you spend doing that? When I'm down here, that is, uh, you know, that's uh, 16 hours a week, maybe. Wow, that's incredible. Maybe, maybe a little less sometimes. It depends, you know. Right. Yeah, I can hear somebody jamming in there now. Or 16, you know, somewhere in there. Right, right. So when they do the assembly line and they're working on products, do you come in and say, okay, today we're going to do B50 Deluxes, and tomorrow we're going to do this, and or how do the runs work? The, the orders are, how that works is depending on the orders that we have, so on what's being made. And generally we have a production manager that handles that on dictating what needs to get built. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that always fascinates me is how you schedule all that and make sure the parts are here and everything arrives, kind of converges at the right time for the right process. Constant ordering. Yeah. We, we, our production manager is named Todd, and uh, Todd really has a big job uh, you know, on his plate all the time. Right, right, absolutely. And we can see that the people are just expert here. We're watching them you know, putting the parts in, and they're, they're so good at it. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely, yeah. At this point, I mean, all the, they're perfect. All the amps are perfect. So, you know, uh, there's not too much uh, now. At this point, with all the models, there's not too much, you know, like overseeing because it comes out perfect, and then I do the final test anyway, so, you know. Oh, that's awesome. I, I love that last little quality control step at the end. Yeah, I have to have it that way. I'm just kind of a little OCD about that. Right. And in a good way. Yeah, absolutely. Dave, you mentioned that we're in the assembly line area. Is it actually an assembly line where each person is doing one task, or does one person build each amp from start to finish? Well, boards are loaded separately. A person that loads the boards, which we have in the racks over here. Um, and then, no, it, it mostly one person builds an amplifier. Yeah. So how long does it take to build an amplifier? Does someone come in in the morning and at the at lunchtime they've got one finished or every hour or how fast? Totally depends on what amplifier. Yeah. So uh, anywhere from eight hours mm -hmm. down to five or six hours. Depends on the situation. It depends on what amplifier it is. Some are more That's complicated, a take longer. Sorry, sorry to interrupt no, you there, no, no. but that's a huge investment of time oh, in putting yeah. and for hand wiring all that hand -wire stuff. Hand wire amps, yeah, they, they take a huge, huge element of time, right, right. which is why hand wire amps cost more. But I don't see like a, a plan in front of them. They just know all these products. They've done it enough that they and I see just racks of, uh, of components to just grabbing the right one and all that. Correct. Sometimes they have a sample amp in front. It depends on uh, it depends on what amp they're building or what product they're building at the time and how well they know it. Right. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot of skill. Oh, yeah. involved here. We're not just sticking a component in and hitting the soldering iron. There's a lot of knowledge and a lot of skill that goes into this. Yeah, a lot of knowledge, yep. Now we have moved into the pedal assembly area and it looks like they're actually working on Friedman pedals back here behind us. They are. They're working on uh, the BEOD it looks like. Nice. And so is this different from the amp line? Do the boards come in on a different... Well, tell us how it's, how it's working. It's a different. Uh, we, the boards, most of them are surface mount boards, so we have a, a, a company stuff surface mount boards for us, but then everything's assembled here. So okay. all made right here, all put together. And once again, very very skilled assembly required to uh, to get all those components in and not have the amplifier or the uh, the pedal. I mean, it's got to come out, right? It's got to be perfect when it's finished. Exactly. It's the same thing as with the amps. It's just that uh, we're a much smaller format, you know. Right. We're now in the amp play-in or testing the, the final stage of the uh, of the process here, where you actually come in and play the the uh, amplifiers. Correct. All the amps when they're done, we don't have too many here right this second, right after NAM, but uh, they all go on these shelves. I have several here uh, for me to test. Uh, also, any repairs I do the final checkout also that we do. And, you know, I have a bench and set up that I can uh, do, do, dig in if I have to and test them all. We use an amp switcher. We switch between them. We test. I test everyone, sign them all. Right. Yeah, I mean, if you look on, here's this, this the one with the RA number on it is a repair, but if you see, I have a signature on top and the initials underneath that piece of tape there. We test them all. It's, this is also the test room for the other brands also, 
which I don't personally test, obviously, but uh, my man Chris over here has got the responsibility of doing that. So we've entered the print shop where it looks like we're doing, uh, right now as we walked in, doing both face plates and back plates for the small box. And it's really cool that you're actually doing them in pairs, that it's doing the front and the back for, for several amps simultaneously. Yes, yes. Yeah, we, uh, obviously, in the small box, the setup for this is we can do uh, eight, eight panels or, well, or four pairs at a time. Uh, we have two, these are Mamaki UV printers. So anything here that has a panel on it or pedals or logos gets all made here. We don't order out anything. So, you know, as we see, we have, you know, like here's a small box front panel that we have right here. Logo, logo is printed right here, you know, on these, on these things. And the whole pedal, too. So here's a Wampler Sovereign chassis that has been painted Essentially, it's a UV curing process, so UV light cures the ink when it's printed on the machine. Instead, it's kind of more the modern, the modern way to do silk screening, so to speak, without the silk screen. Right. So, uh, like anything that is printed uh, here, front panels of amps or all the pedals, all get done on these two UV printers. Again, full control. We can also do custom panels that way, in different color schemes without ordering, have to order 30 of them, or 50 of them, or 100 of them. So again, we have full control over everything in the facility. That's what makes it very different from most facilities. Dave, you aren't kidding. When you talk about going from raw material to the finished product in-house, I mean, it's, tell, tell us what we're looking at here. You really are starting from the raw material. Yeah, so I mean, this is a, a partial sheet. There's large sheets on the shelf over here of uh, uh, some Romark uh, material we use for our front panels. This is just a peel off plastic on top right now. But what happens is it goes from the raw material to the laser cutter behind me. And essentially, like here's a pedal top. So before it gets printed, it gets cut out first on the laser printer. The, uh, the front is peeled off here, and then it gets printed on the UV printers we just saw a minute ago. Dave, it's not just the amplifiers that get play tested at the end, it's also pedals. Correct, we have a guy that play tests every one of our pedals here um, from all the brands, and uh, there's racks of them here. And this is the testing station, he's not here doing it right now, but We've got lots of them sitting here, as you can see. It sounds like a dream job just playing guitar all day through pedals, but there's more to it than that, isn't there? It's probably not a dream job. <laughs> <laughs> it probably gets a little monotonous at times, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, but I mean, he checks all the functions and all the knobs are working correctly, and the, you know, it's functioning and switching it on and off multiple times to make sure everything's solid. Right. It's it's actually a quality control process. It's not jamming. Correct. So we're here in the uh, last stop on our tour, and it's actually a preview of another tour we're going to do of the guitar manufacturing facility. But tell us where we're at now. We're essentially in the guitar room in our facility, where all the guitars, after they're manufactured and final tested, come here and are stored until they're shipped out. Uh, kind of re-looked re at also to make sure that everything is, uh, you know, correct with them. And, you know, we have nice, uh, it's a nice Metro D right here that we have, an aged, an aged one, real pretty one. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. And this is Alex, the uh, head of the guitar division, right? Yes, yes. I am the uh, head of the Friedman Guitar Division here at Boutique Amps Distribution. It's super exciting. Um, love what I do. And, and yeah, we're in the guitar dungeon, you know, essentially, uh -huh. uh, where they all live. We do some, some maintenance, some string changes, and, uh, you know, adjustments and things before they go out to the customers. We want to make sure that we're absolutely providing the best product that we absolutely can. And, uh, you know, Dave and Grover do an incredible job designing and putting everything together, and then it's my job to make sure that it gets to the customer properly. You know, so right, right. that's a big responsibility because those guitars I got to ship out, they got to be right. Absolutely, yeah. There's, you know, they're kind of made of wood and stuff, and things sure. shift and move and change with temperature and whatnot. So we, you know, we make sure they're in tip-top shape. Absolutely, great. David, thanks so much for taking time to give us the tour of the facility here. It really is amazing the amount of stuff that's going on with your brand and everything else that's happening here, too. Yeah, we work really hard at, you know, giving everyone the best product we can possibly uh, turn out from the factory here. And it shows. The attention to detail is just mind-boggling, what you go through to create perfect products. Absolutely, yeah. It's a lot of work, but, you know, there's a reason. And it's fun, too, right? Absolutely. <laughs> And thank you for joining me here in Huntington Park, California. We're coming to you from the Boutique Amplifier Distribution Center, where Friedman Amps, a bunch of other products are made as well. So much cool stuff going on here. And I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. Sweetwater.